Hey guys, so today we're going to be unboxing the new clutch cable I got from Lowbrow Customs and installing it on my Dyna. So this is the box that it came with. Um, it took a little bit of time, but it wasn't that bad, honestly. Um, I, did, I would say that I did get a pretty good deal on it. I think I got this for like less than 30 bucks. So let's open her up. Okay, cool. So this is what it comes like. I got the stock OEM black clip cable. My <clears throat> my dad has actually been leaking um, some oil originally. I thought it was the O-ring. Then I tried the case. Lo and behold, it was the clip cable. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the package so you guys can see a little bit better. Oh, and it also comes with <laughs> perfect the new O-ring. I'm looking for a clip. I was wondering if it comes with a new clip or. Cable. Yeah, so the threads are super, super clean. Really, really nice. If you guys can see that. Honestly, what made me really go for it was the adjuster. I really liked the adjuster on it. It's pretty nice. It comes with a new clutch cable boot as well. Short cable part seems a little bit thicker to me. So it doesn't come with a little uh, new clip, you know, the ones that have your stopper holding in place. You have to be really careful with that because when you're taking it out, they're just so small, thin, and like so fragile that you can bend them really easily. So a lot of people get new ones. I like to get new ones if I can. Um, so we're gonna try not to fuck this up today. <laughs> um, if it does get just a little bit like open or like warped, you can close it back together. Um, and unwarp it. Just try not to fuck it up too much. <laughs> but it does come with the new uh, clutch cable o-ring that goes in your actual trans cover. You're gonna have to screw in there. Or I rotate it in there, I'll show you. And then this new little stopper here. Mind you, when I ordered the Barnett throttle and idle cables from JP, they both came with their own little separate lubrication packet for one of each. This one doesn't come with anything, um, it doesn't come with a clip or lube, but as we all know, I like to use Inox just because I've always used that good quality product so I know it's good. And it's kind of more liquid form so I know that it'll really get down into the cable itself. Honestly, I'm surprised it didn't come with like any stickers or anything like that. Um, usually companies like this like throw in just like one sticker or something or their business card or like a little flyer brochure or anything like that. This one doesn't. Um, I don't really mind. I honestly just care mostly about the clutch cable. Um, but again, I'm doing like a full review of you for you guys, like a whole open box so you can see what it looks like exactly as I take it out of the box. Overall, it seems really, really um, solid. So I am pretty excited for this. Should stop the leak on my dyno. Super nice. All right, so now we're gonna go head over to the garage. Now while this, um, I'm gonna try my hardest and my best not to lose any oil. That's the goal today because I just did my service on it. Well, I'm gonna do this on the side stand. Usually I do it upright on the jack, but obviously I'm not trying to drain the oil right. Uh, they told me I can do it on the side stand, so wish me luck, let's see. So I just wanted to show you guys real quick um, what the leak looks like. Initially I changed out the O-rings, that didn't work. I changed out the cover as well, that didn't work either. It seemed like the hole was walled out, but ended up being the clutch cable. So let's do this. I'm gonna start by grabbing the clutch cable. Um, I use a little hair tie to kind of just keep the cable together just so it's easier to put on like a table next to your bike or something. Just like so. Now I'm gonna start getting all my tools, um, chemicals, the pieces that came with it, like the little stopper and the O-ring ready out just so it'll just be easier for me to grab. Now I'm gonna be reaching for, I'm gonna get a half for the exhaust. You're gonna have to loosen the exhaust to kind of just pop the cover out and get that space in between. I found that it's easier to use a quarter ratchet just cause it's a lot smaller. I uh, use with the long extension. Now I'm gonna get the Inox too so I can prep the lube the cable before I install it. Now I'm gonna grab a few other bits that are gonna be for the trans cover as well um, as the exhaust bracket. Now I'm gonna get my favorite stubby kit just because it's gonna be a lot easier to access that cover while I'm gonna be able to loosen the exhaust. I don't honestly wanna take it off all the way even though it would kinda make it easier, just more of a hassle. Also gonna get a 3 8 ratchet with a short extension. I'm also gonna be pulling out both of my circlet pliers. Um, one's easier 
to get one clip versus the other, we're going to be dealing with the ball and ramp assembly retaining clip as well as the clutch one. They're just completely different sizes, strengths, so it's to me it's just easier to grab two different ones for each purpose. Now this is the retaining ring that I was talking about earlier that you don't want to fuck up. It holds your clutch cable and lever um, together with your housing. Now the first thing I'm going to do is remove these two clips that are holding in your clutch cable. Now I'm just going to grab some poly lube. You can use poly lube or silicone spray, honestly, any just lubricant to try to loop up that rubber boot. This makes it easier sliding up and down uh, the adjuster. You also don't want to risk ripping it too. And if you do, it's not a huge deal. It just helps keep it away from rusting, moisture, mud, dust, sand, and all that stuff. Now, sometimes you'll be able to get enough slack by completely collapsing the adjuster to take the clutch cable out of the lever itself. Sometimes you don't, so you got to adjust it and the actual derby cover itself. But to correctly adjust the clutch, this goes for any clutch, you're supposed to fully collapse the adjuster first and then make your main adjustment at the clutch hub nut. All right, now I'm gonna completely turn the handlebars at full right lock just cause it gives me a lot better, easier access and view to actually see the retaining ring at the lever. Now I'm just gonna get a light to just to kind of help me see that little tiny retaining ring. It's just so tiny and I'm super blind. Um, so I fish it through here and you're gonna want to see the two little holes that are in the retaining ring itself. You're gonna get your little pliers and you're gonna wanna put it one tip in each hole. <laughs> and then directly just stretch it out a little bit just to get over that lip and pull directly straight downwards. Sometimes you get it on the first try, sometimes you don't, don't sweat it. Um, if it gets stuck like it does for me here, just right over the lip and you're about to get it out, um, but it doesn't fully undo itself from that little slot. I'm changing the type of pliers that I'm using just because it's the angled ones and they have a lot smaller and sharper tip so it's just easier to try to pull out now if it gets stuck on that wedge like i said just use like a little tiny flat screw and just like pry around the corners from one edge to the other just not to try to fuck it up too much and if you manage to it's okay because you can always flatten it back out and they're pretty cheap if you just want to get a new one now once you have that retaining ring off you can actually just push through the retaining pin Unless you got fucking weak ass fingers like I do, just get a little punch and just get light little taps to hammer it out. Should come right out easily. Alright, now that you have your retaining ring and your retaining pin out, now you can actually just take your clutch lever out with your cable, push out that little um, bushing, and then you should be able to separate your clutch cable from your clutch lever. I always suggest having a clean little, like, towel or microfiber or just a shop rag whatever it may be just to kind of keep things organized and clean so you know where they are you don't lose shit during this process <laughs> all right now i'm pulling my favorite tool kit out uh, my stubby set i did a separate video on it if you want to go check it out so i'm only going to use that stubby wrench um, for the bottom two trans cover bolts Now this is just me showing you the different options and combinations that you could do per the other bolts that are just easy to get to right in front of you. I'm personally just going to go with a straight long Allen. Here's a big thing. Um, this goes just as much as it does with loosening as well as tightening. You're always gonna wanna go in like a star crisscross kind of pattern just to even out the pressure as you're doing this. You don't wanna risk on warping the gasket if you're gonna reuse it, the cover itself over time. Of course, like with really specific things like rocker box, you definitely wanna go in the sequential order that it says you're supposed to. If not, you might warp like the gasket and you could cause a leak.
wanted to show you why exactly I have to loosen the exhaust. Some people have to do it because they can't um, fully remove the trans cover unless you do. Um, in my case, I can't even take the bottom uh, two bolts out unless I do. Now I'm going to say this just like my boss told me. Don't dry fuck anything, all right? It's never a good thing. You're always going to need some lube. So especially with exhaust studs, you don't want to snap a fucking bolt. Um, so just get some like rust off stuff. Make sure you kind of loosen up up evenly too. You don't want to, you know, have a crooked fucking exhaust. <laughs> I'm loosening up the front just because it's connected by that bracket right in the middle and I'm wondering why the fuck it's not as loose as I want it to to be. Well, it's because my fucking uh, mid controls are like wedged up against my fucking exhaust. And honestly, the threads on this bolt don't feel that great, so I ended up wanting to take it out completely to clean it out. Make sure you're consciously over where your pan is too. Um, if you're trying to do like me where I'm not trying to have to drain it. Now that I've loosened everything up, I'm able to finesse that bolt out. Now I'm grabbing like a shop blanket to put over my exhaust. I want to try to protect that finish and polish that I love. Um, when I try to take that trans cover off, I don't want to risk scratching it. So this is what it looks like on your trans cover. This was controls your clutch. Here's your ball and ramp assembly that's attached to your clutch cable. This is why you have to take this off to actually completely change out the clutch cable. You got to remove it under from this retaining ring that I'm showing you here. Now you might want to do this um, before you take the cover off or not. You're going to want to loosen the actual clutch cable nut at the end of the other side of the cover. You're going to want to get like your thicker set of retaining ring pliers to get this clip out. Um, it's just a lot heavier than like your small tiny retaining ring for your clutch cable. And then you'll be able to take out your ball and ramp assembly and be able to unhook your actual clutch cable. <laughs> 